Hello, everybody. This is Fabiola Delfin from Innova Education. Here with us is also Deborah Cedeño from Innova Education. Thank you, everybody, for logging in. If you could please mute your microphones at all time, we would really appreciate it. All questions are to be written in the chat box at the end of the presentation. As you already know, Innova can help you with your whole process to study in the Montfort University, and our services are free of charge. Here with us, Presenting is Jamie Ash. He is the Regional Manager for Central and South America of De Montfort University. He will be giving the presentation how to be successful in a scholarship interview for the Montfort. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Fabiola. Uh, good evening to everybody. So as Fabiola said, I'm the Regional Manager for De Montfort University. I live in, in Bogota, in Colombia. Um, and I support students uh, and and Innova and anybody that's applying to the Montfort University throughout the region. So if you need any support with anything, please contact everybody at Innova who can help you. And if you'd like to speak to me directly about anything to do with the Montfort University, then I can always help you as well. And um, one question I often get asked is is um, when students are, are applying for some scholarships, there's an interview that's involved. And often I'm asked how to be successful in this in this interview process. And over a number of years with, with helping students, um, I've come to a conclusion about some various points that you should take into account if you are given an interview for a scholarship, which is very important. Um, so what I'm going to do today is talk you through just some very quick points, but actually very useful points about how to be successful when applying to a scholarship. So what will the presentation cover? And it, it won't be lots and lots of writing. I'll talk to you through each slide and give you some pointers. But it'll take, cover what are the different types of scholarships that you should look out for, how to be successful if you are interviewed, which scholarships did the Montfort offer and why the Montfort? So a little bit about, um, so the first part will be about the scholarships and the interview process. And the next, the, the last two parts will of course be about the Montfort, a little bit about our university. So what are the different types of scholarships? Now these aren't limited. There are other types of scholarships, but these are the main types of scholarships. There's the automatic regional scholarships. And this is a scholarship that is given to certain areas of the world and with the month that this includes Latin America. Uh, of course, the university recognizes that the currency uh, conversion and various difficulties economically in, in Latin American countries means that uh, as much financial support as possible is needed. And therefore, we automatically give uh, scholarships for the region. Uh, there's a merit scholarship, which is based on the grade point average or promedio from previous studies which can often help if applying to various scholarships and then there's the interview based scholarships and, and I put a box around the interview based scholarships because this is what we're going to talk about today and this is when students for additional scholarships are interviewed by members of the university it can be the international office i.e myself or it can be somebody from the faculty that that uh, carries out these interviews so what are the common questions in, in, in an interview based scholarship? And actually, it's very similar to a job interview, really it is, because what does the person this interview want to know? Well, first of all, they want to know who you are. So lots of times they'll ask about strengths and weaknesses. Tell me about your strength or your weakness. And we're going to talk about that in a little second. And this next part is tell me about something that you've encountered hard in your life, difficult that you've overcome. And that's to show what are you capable of and how do you perform under pressure? And then the third question, which is very common, is why do you choose the course of this university, which is very important. The next will be how to study, how your studies help you achieve your future aspirations. Again, what are your future aspirations? And the fifth question is usually about how can you contribute to the university outside of uh, your studies? I've just seen a question come up and I'm not sure. Ah, it's probably okay, perfect. I was just making sure somebody wasn't asking a question at the time. So these are the very general basic questions that often happen in an interview process. And what I'm going to do is talk you through each one and give you a little bit of an idea about how to tackle these questions. Now, 
I can't give you the answer. I can't do that. And nobody knows your answers because it's a personal interview. But if you keep these points in mind, when you do come for an interview-based scholarship, such as the one at De Montfort, then you will understand about what the question's about and have a better idea about how to answer them. So let's go to the next slide. And go back one. Okay, let's go to this next one. So the first question that, that we spoke about were, tell me about yourself and tell me about your strengths and weaknesses. So what does this question mean? Is to get to know you as a person. So you have to be honest. Everybody has weaknesses and everybody has strengths. So don't be afraid to talk about your weaknesses as well. I've had some interviews where students, I've said to students, okay, so talk to me about your strengths and weaknesses. Give me an idea who you are. What are your strengths and weaknesses? And, and, and we spend 20 minutes talking about strength, 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 and not one weakness. And I said, well, what are your weaknesses? And the person said, well, uh, I, I, I have to get back to you on my weaknesses because it was like this, this student was scared to talk about their weaknesses. But actually, weaknesses are honesty. And also, weaknesses are something as a positive and something that you can learn from. Everybody has weaknesses. So if you have a look at number two, the point number two, is use the weaknesses as a positive and something that you learn from or will learn from in the future. So you could be slightly disorganized or sometimes you get very anxious or uh, overwhelmed. Well, these are all weaknesses that everybody has, but how do you manage those weaknesses and what are you going to do to learn from them and make you a stronger person? And then go on to your strengths. Be very confident about your strengths. How have these benefited you so far? Talk about your strengths. What have they done? And number four, where I've highlighted in, in, in yellow, talks about something called STAR, which is situation, task, action, and result. So when you talk about your strengths or you talk about your weaknesses, make a very clear example of this. And what do I mean? If I ask you about your strengths and you say, uh, I'm a mentally strong person, well, what does that mean? Or I could say, I'm a mentally strong person. And the reason why I know I'm mentally strong is because one time when I, and you give an example about the situation and what happened and what you did as a mentally strong person and what was the result. You can talk about your weaknesses in the same way. I'm a slightly anxious person and actually there was a time when, and when you're talking about an example of when you're perhaps anxious, talk about what you learned from that and how that's made you a better person or made a stronger person under pressure. All of these things will help the interviewer understand you as a person. The next part is overcoming a difficult situation. So one of the common questions is about hardships in life or your career, or your studies, and how have you overcome a difficult situation? So use this as a way for the interviewer to understand your core management skills. When you study in the UK, either an undergraduate or postgraduate, it's a very pressured environment because it's a difficult, getting a UK degree from the Montfort University or other UK universities is very superior. And therefore, it's not going to be easy. So what the interviewer wants to know is, how are you as a person able to overcome difficult situations? And also, are you able to overcome difficult situations or different situations you've never overcome before by studying internationally, for example? So it's a chance to show that you're capable of managing difficult and precious situations. And if you've not had the opportunity of a difficult situation, then talk hypothetically. Say what you would do if you were given a, a difficult situation. And again, number four, I've highlighted this star, S-T-A-R, again and again and again, I'll highlight this. It's very important that when you give examples about a situation or your strengths or your weaknesses, you explain what the situation was, what you did, how you did it, and the result. So what was the situation, what you did, the task, how you did it, the action, and a result. So for example, if I was to say that I was walking down the streets uh, and a, I suddenly came into contact with a hurricane, the tormenta, and my task was to get away from it as quickly as possible. So my action was to run away from it and the result was that I survived. That's a very silly example, but giving you an idea about how to, to structure your answers. 
is using that structure because it's very clear and you can give clear examples about situations. So when you asked about a difficult situation, what the interview is trying to understand is how are you going to manage at institutions? How are you going to manage at the university? How are you going to manage the pressure of meeting new people or different situations? And use the situation, task, action and result as an example of this. The next one is always very, very common, something I always ask and many of the universities ask, and it's your program and university choice. Please, please, if you have an interview, make sure you understand the program very, very well and understand the university very, very well, because these type of interviews, the interviewer will have an idea about your program and will want to know how much you really know about this program and how much you really want to study at that university. And one, very, one thing you should be very clear about in, in, in point number two is about how will the programme fill the gaps in your knowledge? And that's to say, what do you know now? What do you want to know in the future? And how will the degree help you achieve that goal? And therefore, you should be very clear about what are you going to learn on the programme that's going to help you understand new things in the future. Everybody has a gap in their knowledge. If I don't understand something, I will then go on Google, for example, and look it up. And therefore, I have filled that gap in my knowledge. Maybe it might be bad knowledge from Google, who knows, but it's knowledge. So the idea is that when you go to study something, you're effectively filling a gap in your knowledge. And therefore, be very clear about how the programme fills that gap. So think about gaps. What don't I know? What do I want to know? And how will I know it from what I go and study? And talk about how you're going to use this knowledge in the future. It's really important. Anybody can go on, a, on, on, on the curriculum on the website and look up about a program and say, oh, well, it's got this module, this module, and this module. That's good, but what do those modules do? And what are, they, what, what are you going to do with this knowledge? Be very clear about what you're going to learn and what you want to do with it. Because it will show the interviewer that you have clear, uh, you clearly know why you want to study what you want to study. And finally, be very clear about the university as an institution. Does it have good facilities? Where is it located? How is it ranked? Does it have good teachers? Does it have publications? Which professor do you want to learn with? These type of things are very good because they show that you really understand the university. And be very clear about um, anything else in, in, in terms of societies that you might want to, to learn. The idea is that somebody that's applying to a program at a university, they should have very good knowledge of not just the program, but the university. Now, there's another question here, which if we just go back to number four, which is about future aspirations and the future targets. And the idea is, what are your future aspirations? An interviewer wants to know that you are not just going to go to the university, get the degree and then vanish. What are your future aspirations and why? What are you going to do after you have finished your degree? So be very clear about the program and the learnings and how they will help you achieve an aspiration. You may not have a really big aspiration. I'm not saying that you need to say, I want to be the next president of Colombia or the pre next president of Mexico. No, I mean, that you know, aspirations are, uh, and quantifiable, they're relative to everybody's everybody's personal situation. But even if it's however big or small, have an aspiration and talk about that aspiration. What is it that you really want to do once you graduate? Because that really does show future thinking, a future target. And that will help the interviewer get a better idea about you as a person. And talk about why you are not able to currently fulfill this aspiration. Again, going back to gaps. Why can't you do what you want to do now without studying? Because that will then show the interviewer that you have really chosen this programme for a specific purpose. Now, many times, you know, students could say, well, actually, I probably could do what I wanted to do, but, and there's always a but, you know, there's always a reason why you want to study what you want to study. So be very clear about that aspiration. And number four, be aspirational. Don't be scared to be aspirational. If you want to do something in the future and you have an aspiration to do it and talk about that and don't be shy. Another thing is about how else will you contribute to the university? This is really important because universities like diversity. Don't want for love Latin American students because the Latin American community is so diverse. 
and so involved with many different things. And this is really what we want to see. What will you do outside of your studies? Because many students can just go to a university, sit in the library, go to classes and just do it. But these special students, the ones that really get involved are the ones that the universities really want. So think about societies. Which society would you like to join? Would it be the rowing society? Would it be the Latin society? Would it be the cooking society? You know, think about things that you may like to do outside of studying and be very clear about that. And also think about what cultural experiences you can bring from Latin America, Latin culture. You can say, I'm from Mexico, and my culture is this, or my parents or my grandparents, or we have these cultural traits, and this is what I'd like to show British people. So I'd like to join the Latin society, or oh, I have special cooking skills. I cook Latin, uh, Latin American food, Mexican food, or whatever food. And I'd like to join the cooking society and show British students how we eat, or whatever we eat. So think about extracurricular activities that perhaps you could bring over to make you different. And also think about extracurricular activities that you currently tend to take in your home country. You may be a top professional, you may be a top sports professional, or you might be a gymnast. So talk about those things and, and say how that you want to use those whilst you're at the university. And be open to trying new things and meeting new people and make that clear. You know, you can say, look, I don't really do much at the moment in terms of extracurricular activities. I don't. I don't dance ballet, I don't do, do gymnastics, but what I would like to maybe do or try whilst I'm at university is I'd like to learn the guitar, so I'd like to join the music society, or I'd like to learn French, so I'll join the French society. So be very open to trying new things and meeting new people because you can also have an aspiration. I'm not saying that everybody has uh, an extracurricular activity that they do, but some people do, some people don't, but be open to trying new things and maybe look at societies at the month or at the universities that are available. The one thing I want to mention about the interview process, whether it's with myself or someone from the faculty, is we are not bad people. We're not here to trick you and to try and make you feel nervous and sweating and think, oh God, have I passed? Have I not? No. What we, we really want to help you with scholarships. We really do want to give you scholarships. So the more we can understand about you, the more we can, more better chance we can give you. So just be very relaxed, be, be open-minded, and the interview questions will be, it'll be a very uh, easy flowing conversation. It won't be like you are being interviewed in a job in that, in that respect. The questions might be like a job interview, but you won't be sat down and say you passed or failed, or you will or won't. It's for us just to get an idea about you and understand, can we give you a scholarship? How much can we give you? When can we give you it? Why would we give you it? Because if we give a scholarship, we also have to write up our notes and it has to go to a board and we have to provide information about why are we giving this scholarship? So the more information we have about you as a student and your aspirations and your strengths and weaknesses and your extracurricular ideas and, um, and what you've been doing in your home country and why the programme, it gives us much better chance of getting you a scholarship. So I hope, I hope that gives you some ideas about what's asked in, 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 in scholarship interviews. And, and just to go on to De Montfort about our scholarships, well, we've got quite a few here. We have the regional scholarship, which is £2,000. We have an interview-based top-up scholarship, which is a further £2,000. So you could be entitled to £4,000 in total, bringing your, your fees down to around nine or £10,000 for some programmes. Please remember, this is just for the first year. So if you're an undergraduate student, it just counts for the first year. Or if you're a master's student, it's only one year anyway. It doesn't count for every year. And there are other scholarships there as well. The business school, full scholarships, that goes on your grades and an interview. MBA scholarships, we have the LGBTQ scholarships, which is for the gay community. Uh, and we have the sports scholarships as well. And these are all based on different things. The only difference is the sports scholarship is more performance based. So you'd have to provide evidence of your level of skill in the sport. But the other ones are interview or merit based. So you'll be aware that, oh, that's a merit interview, or oh, that's a regional, that's a, sorry, that's a merit scholarship, or oh, that's a regional scholarship, or oh, that's an interview scholarship. And you have an idea about how you apply for those. So with a merit scholarship, you, you provide your grades. With a regional scholarship, you are born where you're born with nationality of that country. And an interview scholarship, you of course undergo the interview. And taking those points I've spoken about will hopefully help you answer the questions. 
So on to the Montfort very quickly. I won't I won't start giving you the, the 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 full sales pitch because you know I'm sure that everybody's receiving lots of webinars and really this is for me to give you some of my my advice about interviews. But talking about the Montfort, we're we're the top 150 modern universities in the world. Uh, we're modern because um, the Montfort was established uh, 150 years ago, but we've uh, we've we've it became a it became a full fully light a fully accredited university with all programs and the government many many years ago but it's considered a more modern university um but it, it's really amazing there's millions and millions of pounds of investment into buildings and faculties and, and and innovation and laboratories so if you go and study this university you really do have a great time the very nice thing about this university is the community as well the community of students and teachers alike is very nice it's, it's a very friendly place to study, right through to people that are from Leicester, are very nice people. And we have many, many programs. We have the, the fashion and design, fashion management, with marketing, with many famous alumni from the university. There are internships included in programs where you can go and study, um, where you can go and work for 12 months. If you do a marketing degree, part of your marketing degree is a 12 week live project helping a business with their marketing issues and um, we have interior design and product design and um, governed by some of the best lecturers in the world from the actual uh, industry we have business and law the programs are managed and, and taught by professionals that are currently in the industry or have had years of industry the Montfort university is a very practical university the idea of studying at the Montfort is to help you get a job or achieve what you want to achieve after you graduate and not just have a, uh, a room full of, of, of notes, of revision notes and exams. The idea is that you learn the practical elements of these programmes but when you are really going out after graduating, you have a very strong chance of getting a job and that's why the Montfort have 95% employability percentage rate because they really ensure that students are very well prepared once graduating. We have very good um, computer engineering and media laboratories and actually the data analytics, cyber technology and cyber security are very, very popular programs. More and more students from Latin America are applying to these programs because they're very popular and very well put together. Again, with industry practice, that so you really become well prepared after leaving. And finishing your studies and of course we have the faculty of health and life sciences which is nursing and biomedical sciences um, and pharmacy which are very popular in the americas as well talking about accommodation quickly we have lots of, of uh, accommodation available all new very nice and the beautiful thing about the Montfort is it's right in the middle of the city so you don't need to pay for transport you can walk very easily it's very close the amenities are all very close uh, and the Montfort has something called DMU Global, which means that during your program, you have the opportunity, it's almost, it's given away, the university mostly pay for it, you to go on international trips to better your understanding of your program. These are academic trips or exchanges or work trips or volunteers, uh, volunteering. You can see here, there are so many in so many parts of the world, from Hong Kong to Nuremberg to Moscow to Vietnam, Japan, Trinidad, all of these, these trips you can take as part of your program to give you a better understanding of what you're studying and really help you build your, your, your CV, your Aja de Vida. Um, and these are just some pictures of DMU Global. Uh, this is just a little bit about rankings, but I mean, if you wanted to know about rankings, you can ask me. These are just accumulated rankings, but you can see that they're all pretty high. The Mump is a mid-ranked university in, in the terms of the UK tables. Um, which is very good because the price that you pay to study at the month versus the ranking is an extremely good return on investment. And as I say, students really learn the practicality of, of their studies, about how to use them in everyday life. And students are very, very happy at the Montford. If I put you in touch with any student that studied at the Montford, I can promise you that well, from Latin America I know are very happy there because they are very well looked after. Um, Professors are very nice. It's a very close community. If you need support, it's there. And they really welcome international students with open arms. It's a very international university. Uh, and the campus is really excellent. You can see here at the bottom left hand side, it says that uh, DMU awarded gold in 2017. And this framework is used to understand how good is the teaching at the Montfort University. And to get gold, 
it's very difficult. You see silver and bronze, but the top ones have gold. And that means that the students are, are really taught very well by the professors. And it's a real opportunity to go to a very nice university for a lot less money than many other universities in a very nice part of the United Kingdom, which is just one hour away from London, in a very nice city with very friendly people for a very good education. So if you're thinking about studying in the UK, I really, really um, influence you to go and, and have a look at the month, have a look at the programmes, apply and apply for the scholarships because the cost of studying at the Montfort and the living cost of studying at the Montfort is a lot lower than many other places. You can live a lot cheaper than you would in London, almost three times as cheap. So if you think that actually the UK is expensive, think about the Montfort because it's actually not. It gives you a very good cost of studying and a cost of living and a very good degree from the university. So if you, if you want to apply to the Montfort and you want to interview for the scholarship, and please keep those points in mind, keep the Montfort in mind. And if you need anything, please speak to the wonderful team at Innova. And of course, I'm also here to help on hand with any additional uh, calls or additional inquiries about the university. We're on the same time zone. I speak Spanish. If, if there's any parents that would like to speak to me in Spanish or any students in that fact, any students like to sometimes speak in Spanish uh, and any other inquiries that you have, of course, I'm always here to support you. Uh, that's it, Fabiola. If you if you want to, if anybody has any questions, I guess they can they can ask in the chat in the chat section. Exactly. If everybody can actually just put your questions there, and then Jamie will reply to them. While they ask, uh, Jamie, I understand that the first uh, scholarship is given automatically, or do students actually have to apply to the one, the Latin American one? So the, the Latin American scholarship is given um, is given automatically. It's one thousand five hundred pounds is given automatically, uh, and then another five hundred pounds on top, so two thousand in total. And the scholarship is given once the student pays a deposit for the university. So you have to pay a deposit for the university to confirm your place and once that's done the two thousand pounds is automatically reduced off the, the remaining tuition fee and then if they want to apply for an additional two thousand pounds and that's done via interview based or they can apply for other scholarships that are available but they're not cumulative so you can't you can't add lots of different scholarships up together whichever is the biggest scholarship you get in total that will that will be the scholarship that you get and uh, you can't start adding them all together Great, thank you for that. And then afterwards, the interview-based ones, because I understand these two can be mixed, how would that work? How would students need to apply to the interview? So once, if a student wants to apply for an interview, they can they can let me know directly or through you guys, and then we organize an interview and let the student, and we organize a date and time for the, for the student uh, and send an email confirmation. And then the, the interview is done over, over Zoom or Skype. Um, and then the, this is then taken to the board for them to be reviewed and then an inter, and then a, a usually a response within two weeks. Great, thank you for that. Maybe we'll Pleasure. wait for a minute to see if we have any other question over here. It seems Ariadna will have a question, so if you can please put it there, Ariadna. There we go. The deadline for the business school scholarship. Yes, yeah, a really good question. So it's before July the 30th. Um, the business school scholarship, which is this one, is before July the 30th. So if you want to apply for the business school scholarship, um, you should you should apply for the program first get your offer and then you can apply for the business school scholarship
Great, thank you for that. So question that said, when is the deadline for the business school scholarship? And now Ariadna is asking that she, that she just presented her documents. So in order to get the scholarship for Latin America, she just has to prove that she is from Latin America, that's it? Yes, exactly, yeah. So when you're on your, on your scholarship application, it will show that you're from Latin America and then that will automatically be apply, um, applied. The, 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 you have to have an offer first and then you have to pay the, the deposit for the program to get the £2,000 scholarship activated. Perfect. Thank you, Jamie. Okay. Are there any other questions for now? There we go. We have another question. What about the interview-based top-up scholarships? Uh, she wants more details about that. So, so what what details would she like? What 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 type of details? Okay, so maybe we'll wait for Nicole to tell us what type of details. Uh, Jose is also asking when it says merit scholarship, is this about the undergraduate GPA? Yes, that's correct. So, if it's for your um, for the master's degree program, which is the MBA would be, because you have to. Uh, sorry, you, the MBA is a is a is a higher degree, so it would be from your undergraduate studies. Yes. Perfect. Ariadna also wants to know. I must have to apply first to the program and then to the scholarship. That is right. Okay. So correct. Apply through us. You can apply through Innova Education, Ariadna. We help you out with that process. Uh, you can be in touch with us. I can give you my email right here if you don't have it. And then afterwards, once you get your offer, then uh, then we start with the scholarship process, right, James? Correct. That's correct. And remember, for all the students. This, these scholarships will make sure that your your tuition fees come down significantly. And if you look at other universities versus the month, the cost of studying will be a lot cheaper. So it really is worth applying and, and applying for the scholarship. Because I know that lots of people rely on funding in Mexico. And, and if that funding isn't available, then, you know, the month is, is a very good option and, and very affordable. Um, so it's really worth applying, getting your offer, and then applying for the scholarships, however many you can, basically. Excellent. Thank you for that. Uh, I don't know if Nicole wants to ask something specific about the scholarship. Let's see. Yeah. For example, we have 2,000 as Latin Americans and 2,000 more for the interview scholarship that's it's up to two thousand more yeah so if you want to apply for the up to two thousand more this is done on an interview basis um, and then once the interview has been conducted it's sent to the the board of admissions to then review how much up to two thousand they they would like to award so there's up to two thousand pounds more additional with a, a total um a total value of four thousand pounds Great, thank you for that, Jamie. Uh, do we have any other questions or here we go? Oh no, they're only saying thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. So thank you, Jamie, very much for being here with us. Uh, remember everybody who logged in that you can also be in touch with Innova Education and we can help you out with everything. We are also in constant touch with Jamie regarding uh, De Montfort University specifically. So. Uh, you will be in contact with him. But thank you again, Jamie, for the presentation. My pleasure. Thank you very much for having me, Fabiola and, and Innova team. And good luck, everyone. Please do apply to the month. We would love to have you to come and study with us. And I know that it's a difficult time at the moment, but we hope that everything will be resolved shortly. Yes, exactly. That's what we are hoping for. So, <laughs> everybody, and uh, let me see if somebody's saying anything else. We have something in the here we go. We just have some thank you. So thank you as well. Pleasure. Yes, and we'll be in touch soon. Take care, everybody. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.